This episode of Film Rides brought to you by Domain.com. Can you do an Australian accent? No. Every time I try, it's like, God die, mate. And you always have to say, <laughs> you always have to say like a certain thing, like good day, mate, or eight, or eight shrimp on the Barbie. I have another eye. Shrimp on the Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question. How much should I charge as a freelancer for shooting and editing? 17 thumbs up. Please enter this seven hours ago. But that completely depends on you. You have to be objective about it. You have to, the one thing that I've always tried to do throughout my career is know exactly where I'm at and not try to be above that. Usually that's when people hurt themselves because they overpromise and under deliver and you never want to do that. So try to take a step back and look at where you're at and price accordingly to that. I mean, if you're banging out some unbelievable stuff and people are kind of lining up to do work with you, you're going to be able to charge a little bit more. But if you're just breaking in and you're really searching for jobs, try to be competitive. Look around at other production houses around you, see what they're charging for similar works and drop down a little bit. Another thing that I do to try to get around that weirdness uh, when I used to do my freelance work, especially when starting out, is I would ask the person that I wanted to do work with what their budget was and then I would work off of that. So I would let them sort of set the cost. If it was too low, then yeah, sure, I can walk away. But sometimes you're gonna get paid a little more than you would have even offered by doing that. But just remember, don't overpromise and under deliver. Never do that. Is it pronounced tomato or tomato? Hmm, well, Robert Downey Jr., I believe it's tomato. Cartoon animation, how does it happen? Well, that just depends on what type of animation you're talking about. There's tons of types now. I mean, it used to just be all, you know, single cell by hand animation. Now you have uh, flash animation, you have stuff that's done within After Effects, you have 3D animation. I mean, even South Park's done with 3D software, but it's still 2D. At some point, they were doing with cutouts and going frame by frame. So it all depends on what you're doing. but. Traditional animation is basically stop-go animation. It's basically the same sort of thing. You draw several frames and then you draw 24 of them and you have one second. So it's just going piece by piece by piece. It's intense work and I really respect the artists that do it. But basically, it's, I guess that's the way to put it. It's the same thing as stop-go in a way. Could you show what settings you use to export video? We actually did that already in this episode right here. Go check it out. It's actually a whole behind the scenes look at how we pump out an episode of Film Riot, so, you know. Watch it! How do you stay organized? That is that is a great question, and one I'm still trying to work out. I mean, one, I have people that help me stay organized, and I've started to delegate a lot because, you know, we're getting enough going on that I just can't do it all by myself. But when you're doing it all by yourself, I just, there's a great app if you have an iPhone called uh, To Do, which is friggin' awesome. I love it. It gives you reminders. It'll sync for your iPad, your iPhone, and your computer. I also use the Notepad app on the computer. I also use paper, whiteboards. I mean, whatever I can jot notes in and things I need to remember to make myself lists, I do it. And I like to keep the business and the creative separate because we do do, do do, <laughs> we do do, we do, I did it again. So many things that I have to sort of compartmentalize it. So the business will be over here and like the to-do list and things like that. And creative is usually like in the notepad app or something where it can just be all over the place and zany because I like to keep my creativity sort of freeing like that. But I'm still trying to figure it out and I don't think that would work for everybody. The way I do it is kind of crazy. So you really just have to find a way for yourself. Trial and error, see what works for you. What is the most serious injury you or someone on the crew has had during a shoot? There hasn't really been any serious injuries. I mean, there's been a lot of little things, uh, scrapes, bruises, cuts, stuff like that, I mostly that from Josh. There was the time that you almost, yeah, well, not real. Okay, so when we were doing the Hanging Josh episode, well, one, it was crushing his manberry, so that, sorry just, about just, just. that one. Horrible. And then uh, two, we had that rope around his neck, which was the prop rope, not tied to anything, but we had someone upstairs just gripping it very light, like with fingertips. So if it, anything pulled on it, you know, there's no tension on that thing, just up there being held by a person as a safety margin, not tying it to anything. That way it looked tight, but it actually wasn't attached to anything. It was completely safe, right? Wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> Josh, the harness actually came a little loose and Josh dropped down a bit. And when he did, the person panicked and thought they would help Josh by grabbing the rope and pulling to try to save him from falling three feet. 
<laughs> so Josh was hanging by the neck for like two seconds. And I'm like, what are you doing? So the moral of the story is don't use that guy. Like the guy that thinks, hey, I'll help him hey, out. I'll hold him up by the neck to save him from falling two and a half feet. <laughs> his portions. And the last question is, camera aside. What is your favorite piece of equipment that you can't live without? This is a good and very difficult question. I'm gonna assume the computer doesn't count or software because it did say equipment. equipment. Yeah. That's hard because I mean, I really can't, the only thing I can't live without is my camera. I can make do with everything else. I mean, audio, obviously, but there's not one piece of gear that I'm like that. I'm really, I mean, it's new, but I am loving the V-Bag so far. Uh, I don't, you know what, maybe, okay, I would have to rephrase it because there is no live without other than my camera. So I'm gonna rephrase it to what's the, I can only choose one other piece of gear to go with me. I'm gonna choose a slider. I love dolly shots, plus you can get stable shots with it, drop that bad boy in, get some sweet movement. I'm gonna go with a slider. If you are a person. Which they're probably not. What? that there are aliens out there on you, our planet. What do you mean probably not? I mean, if there were aliens on our planet, I, I would assume that there's just a couple, so there would most probably be human and possibly it's aliens on our planet? They're here, Ryan, they're real. They're among us. They're among us. Hmm. So if you're an alien that is among us and you want to tell the world, you're going to need yourself a domain name and web hosting, you know, like IamAnAlien.com or .net. You know what net stands for? New extraterrestrial. You just read my freaking mind, my friend. Dot nets infuse your website with credibility. So people are going to be like, this guy must be an alien because he has a dot net site. So clearly he's not lying. Credibility infused dot net. And you can get it from uh, domain.com. Their dot nets are only $8.99 a year. That's you, affordable. Yeah, I'm it's affordable. aliens don't have a lot of money. That's what I was thinking too. I mean, they came from the galaxy... Oh, drama domina of, or that one that that's the neighboring galaxy <laughs> so either either one works fine so save money by going to domain.com get it for eight dollars and 99 cents a year and you can save more money guess how, how mr alien person who's new to our planet so i need to tell this to you use the coupon code film right at checkout at domain.com you're gonna get 15 percent off my friend so when you think domain names mr alien think domain.com and i look forward to seeing you get dissected what as an alien, dude. You think America's just gonna welcome him with open arms? No, we're gonna cut him open and see what makes him take and where he comes from. That's disturbing. Well, it's the truth. Merk. Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my short film suggestion of the week. This one comes from Clint Jones, who did a short film from for the Sleeping Dogs video game. It's basically just an eight minute fight scene and a freaking epic one. The fighting in this thing is just awesome. It's well shot, well paced, well edited. So for an example of just a balls to the walls action scene, definitely check out this short film. Again, a lot of you may have seen this one, but I saw it a long time ago and I, I just, I love it. So check it out and we'll see you guys next week when we have the winners of the new challenge.